Dear students, in this module, we're going to see the techniques that are used for MS-based proteomics. As you know, in MS-based proteomics, a protein is ionized, wherein some charge is added onto the protein, and the protein is set into motion within a magnetic field, in, which is a part of a mass spectrometer. So once the protein is moving within this magnetic field, then it is deflected in its motion, in its trajectory, in proportion to the mass it has. These deflections are therefore uh, proportional to the mass and can be measured, and therefore you can arrive at the mass of the protein. The protein mass, once measured, or the peptide mass for that matter, once measured, can then be compared with the protein sequence databases and the proteins that are there in these databases. Of course, we can compute the molecular weight of a protein if we have its sequence, which is simply adding up the molecular weight of all the amino acids within the protein. So once you have the molecular weight of a protein from the protein database, then you can compare this mass with the mass of the protein that has been output by the mass spectrometer. So if the, these two masses or the molecular weights, if they are matching, then you can assume that the protein that is there in the mass spectrometer chamber is the same as the protein from the database. However, there is a possibility that multiple proteins have the same or similar molecular weight when compared with the protein from the mass spectrometer. So in such a situation, you cannot deterministically or definitely say that the proteins that you have got are actually the one that is there in the uh, mass spectrometer chamber. Therefore, there are several strategies to score and rank these proteins. Let's take a look at the schema for this process. In this schematic diagram, as you can see that we have a protein, we can digest it using an enzyme. For instance, if you use trypsin, then the protein will be digested at all lysine residues. So once you have digested the protein, you will arrive at several peptides, depending on how many sites were cleaved within the precursor protein. And then each of these fragments is measured by the mass spectrometer. So once you have measured each resultant peptide by a mass spectrometer, then you will have the mass for each peptide. Now, if you can go back into the database, which can be uniprot or swissprot, then you can fragment all the proteins within this database at the sites that were cleaved during the digestion phase and arrive at the same masses that were reported by the mass spectrometry. Of course, this digestion is done by a simple software code that you can write yourself and is therefore called in silico digestion or in silicon digestion, which means digestion within the computer program. So once you have performed in silico digestion of the proteins from the database, then you can arrive at several peptides like this. And then you can compare each of these peptides given here with the peptides given by the experiment. So once you compare them like that, then you can arrive at the matches. So therefore, some of the fragments will match, but some others may not match. So depending upon the number of matches, then you can say what kind of a, a match or the uh, sequence match it is. This diagram is given in figure 3.1 in your textbook for your further perusal. So to summarize, some proteins or peptides are measured for their mass using whatever sample you have, using a mass spectrometer, and then these masses are compared 
with the proteins or the peptides from the protein sequence databases and you use some scoring method to actually count how many peptides from the experiment match with the peptides from the in silico digestion.